2014, the Ebola virus began to claim lives and wreck livelihoods in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. People in both urban and rural areas were affected by the Ebola crisis. To control the virus, communities were placed into quarantine and movements were restricted. People couldn't run their businesses or reach their farms to take care of crops. Families went hungry as Ebola tightened its grip. Ebola impacted greatly upon people's ability to find food. In some cases, there were more mouths to feed as households took in those that had no one else to turn to. At community level, most other communities were quarantined and couldn't go to market to buy or to sell. And those that tilled the land or cultivated the land could not go to take care of the farm or to harvest their crops. There were other households where the breadwinner passed away because of Ebola. And so the income, that income was very important to get them again to survive. Ebola is a good thing. As quarantine measures were relaxed to support affected households and relaunch local economies, Cash transfer programming was a solution to food insecurity caused by the Ebola crisis. Once vulnerable households are selected, NGOs either distribute cash directly themselves or draw on the expertise of service providers such as banks or mobile network operators. Beneficiaries then receive money directly from these service providers or via SIM cards on mobile phones. Before the outbreak of Ebola in Sierra Leone, the government of Sierra Leone, with support from the World Bank, already had a safety net project providing cash transfers to the poorest of the poor households across the country. The World Bank and the government were already uh, involved in the cash transfer program in Sierra Leone under the social safety net program. So when Ebola struck, uh, it creates the opportunity to expand to other households across the country. Coordination was a critical aspect of cash transfer programming during the crisis. With so many different organizations involved, responses to Ebola were at risk of being duplicated or mistakes not shared. A cash transfer working group was set up to bring all the different stakeholders together from NGOs to government departments and harmonize their interventions. Most importantly, communities were involved from the outset to ensure projects were designed and implemented successfully. We carried out extensive mobilization. We introduced the project to the community leaders. We talked about its objectives and we asked them to form the community identification committees to help identify the poorest of the poor in the community. We planned uh, to carry out uh, digital transfers whereby the project participants will receive their cash 
uh, using SIM cards and their mobile phones. However, uh, we recognize that uh, uh, network coverage in the project locations was quite poor. One of the major problems you get is the network for Gito people and all. The other thing you can get problem with uh, identification, especially in areas which have no network for do electronics with our offline payments you can do. Cash transfer programming met many challenges along the way. Infrastructure was poor, with roads often impassable. Most beneficiaries lived in rural areas with little or no mobile network, which made digital transfers difficult. Despite the difficulties, people came together to solve the common problem of food insecurity. The cash handouts have been very beneficial uh, to the project participants as well as the communities. And from our assessments, we found out that at least 70% of the cash given out has been used for food. And about 30% has been used for other household needs such as Medicare, education and agriculture. Based on the look at it, it's not mature, eh? or it has passed the stage. Cash transfer programming reduced the problem of food insecurity. But to rebuild sustainable livelihoods, other initiatives had to be found, in addition to giving cash. In Liberia, NGOs give farmers seeds, tools, and training in modern methods, so that crops could be regrown quickly with maximum yields. <laughs> With agricultural production restored, people are returning to markets, local economies are stabilizing, and households have a sustainable source of income. Communities are more resilient, and households are better prepared to face other shocks that might occur in the future. This cash transfer program is very successful because initially it will become the people in the condition will be meet just after Ebola, how they be the, the kind of way they be the live, who can, who can begin this cash transfer, begin to give this money. And to see the talk, the people their life change, their appearance change, everything just perfect about it today, as compared to that time when Ebola just done. Whilst the impacts of Ebola continue to be felt, cash transfer programming has helped the most vulnerable households get back on their feet. By injecting money into local economies, markets and communities are thriving once more.